Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. It's October 28th, 2022. And the other night, we were listening to the Scott 340. Oh, for a long time. Probably from like 4.30 to like 1.30 a.m. But around 12 midnight or so, or two minutes to midnight, somewhere thereabouts. Yes, that was an Iron Maiden reference. Uh, we heard a loud pop in the receiver, and um, so I was like, wow, must have been an electrolytic or something, or or the body of a resistor cracked or something like that. Well, so I opened the back. Now, I, I've had this receiver for a long time, and you can see I changed a lot of capacitors, and I did the bias supply, but I didn't do a full, you know, there are still more parts in here that should be replaced. Of course, this thing is 60 years old. And someone before me did the main power supply capacitor there, the first one. That black one there, that was that's new. But this next one is getting warm, so it's getting uncomfortably hot. So that's going to be next. That's a 20 microfarad, 450 volt, four section capacitor. So, but anyway, the other day we were listening to the tuner and it kind of just faded out. Um, and there's a reason why I'm talking about the tuner. So, so anyway... We weren't listening to the tuner when we heard the loud pop. We were listening to vinyl. So I open this up and I see this. And uh, at the bottom, these fragments. Okay. So I know those, I, I know Scott Amps and Scott used these Collins uh, capacitors, 25 mic, uh, 25 volt. So looking around, I, uh, I, I got the schematic, but uh, looking around, you can see the cap right there and this is in the uh this is in the if circuit there's like a three tube three tubes in a row boom 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 so it's in the tuner circuit so that's why it didn't affect the amplifier um when we were listening and the show must go on so we listened the rest of the night and uh i it's you know a couple weekends late i finally got a chance to look at it and uh there you go so it's a 25 microfarad capacitor and it's in the tuning section, the IF section of the amp. And I'll show you a screenshot at the end of the video. So what's the moral of the story? That um, these things work great, but, you know, all these pieces in here are literally a time bomb. They're going to fail. They're 60 years old. Uh, so this is just, you know, when you take the dive into vintage, especially vintage tube audio, this is going to happen. But even solid state, you can have the same uh, issues. So uh, I did a partial restoration, but I didn't replace everything at the time because I either didn't have time or I just did the what I felt were the important ones, the ones that would cause collateral damage if they failed. But now I had this cap fail in the tuning section, and I've replaced this in other uh, uh, Scott components, that Collins 25 microfarad, 25 volts. So... So I don't know if this helps you at all. Um, I love these things. They sound so good. So while I have this apart, I'm going to check the bias balance, DC balance, because this is a 340. It doesn't have bias adjustments, but it has DC balance. So you just want to make sure your tubes, your output pairs are biased um, properly. Um, that's about it. Next thing I'm going, going to do uh, eventually is this a uh, big power supply can capacitor. I'm going to change that. And uh, definitely these on the phase splitters. I, I'm surprised I didn't do them yet. These 0.25 microfarads. These guys are ready to blow up. Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Once again, this is the beautiful Scott 340 receiver uh, from 1962. And uh, I have uh, some modern capacitors. They're smaller, so it's... Uh, a little bit easier to uh, fit them when you replace the old ones. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.
and just to show you the repair uh, I didn't have a 25 microfarad so I used the 22 in parallel with a 4.7 okay that'll give you uh, 26.7 um, microfarads and these are also 50 volt capacitors where the original was only rated at 25 volts now this is RF so I don't know you know the old cap certainly could have measured 26.7 microfarads I don't know so hopefully well, this won't throw off anything critical as far as the alignment uh, it's been a while since I took FM in college so this might just be a bypass capacitor but um, you know what you want to do is just change one part and then try it because if you you know anytime you deviate on a value it could be critical or it could be non-critical so just be careful with that okay so she's all set now just gonna make sure my DC balance is correct between the output tubes and put this back together until I can work on it again and change some uh, more parts like the next high voltage capacitor right there the 4x20 microfarad at 450 volt. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Bye. Okay, we're going to record the uh, first capacitor coming right off the uh, two 5AR4 rectifiers. I'm going to record it uh, charging up on the Scott 340. So, folks, uh, you know, lethal voltages in these units. So, you really got to be careful. Um, I have this receiver on its side. It's pretty stable. If this were to fall right now, I would not try to save it. I would just get out of the way because I do not want to get hit with that. So don't work with this stuff if you don't know what you're doing. I work with um, electric power often at my job, and I've gotten shocked a few times, and <whistles> it is not fun. Uh, that's with AC. This is DC. So there you go, 480 on the uh, first capacitor coming off the two 5AR4 rectifiers on the Scott 340 receiver. Uh, you can see that that's a black capacitor. That's not original. It's been replaced. You know, you don't want to be looking inside these things. You know, a cap can fail at any moment, and you could go blind if something exploded in your face. Uh, I do have glasses on, but still. All right, I'm going to carefully shut this off now, and you'll watch the capacitor discharge. So you can see it, it discharged uh, pretty fast. It's down to, uh, to a safe voltage. But I still wouldn't touch anything. Because you never know. What if the meter just died on me? And there's still high voltage in here. So you got to be careful. So anyway, I just checked the bias on these. Uh, not the bias, the DC balance. Well... It is the bias, and they're all at like minus 20.4, the the um, the grids, minus 20.4 volts, so the output tubes are happy on this. All right, I'll see you later.